James, sister. Okay. Um, you can read that one out. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, let's see. They're giving us a graph of f. We're supposed to figure out the sine of f, f prime, and f double prime. So I look at the graph of f. I'm only supposed to look at this one point. I notice that at this point, the y coordinate of f is negative, so I put a negative right there. Uh, get with that. I also notice that at this one point on f, the tangent slope, the tangent slope has a positive value. So I know that f prime's value at this x coordinate will also be positive. Please, sir. Um, let me ask you a few questions and I'll be able to help you. So are you okay that we're looking right here? Are you okay that because this is the graph of f, I can think about f prime by thinking of the tangent slope right here? With me? So I draw a tangent slope like so. Now, I don't know the value of that slope. Can you tell me whether that slope will be a positive value or negative? <coughs> it's positive. Memorize this, Sarah. If the tangent has this sort of appearance, the slope of the tangent line is negative. It will have a negative value. And then opposite, positive value. Does that help the play? So for Uh, ignore this for a second. Yeah, this actually has nothing to do with finding f prime. Yeah, so don't look at this yet, Ellie. This, this oh, it told you the problem. It says here in the figure below at x equals zero. So I went right to x equals zero. So that didn't have anything to do with this. Yeah. Good care about it. Good question. No one else. I uh, wanted to have double prime, <coughs> and we're looking at the graph of f. And notice that prior to this point, f has a concave up shape. After this point, f has a concave down shape. This point in the middle, you can memorize this, this is called a point of inflection. You will keep I guarantee you'll see that word on the test, point of inflection, or inflection point. They say it both ways. You must memorize that a point of inflection is where the concavity of F changes. Concavity of F changes at the inflection point. Great. Can we reword that? Um, so when a function changes from concave up, to con so I at the x coordinate, where a function changes from concave up to concave down, that's called a point of inflection yeah. on that function. Okay. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Like the concavity part, like what is, is that just what you just concave? Oh, like? yeah. The word concavity simply means concave up or concave down. So instead of having to say, you know, repeatedly concave up and down, I just say the concavity. That's all. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. Good. Anyone else? I always mark down two tickets for every time I call on you. So, um, please, break. Okay, so have you finished telling us how to get at the point? Not quite yet. Okay. But what's happening, Braden, is that at the point of inflection, in fact, you can answer this. Based on what I just said, the definition of a point of inflection is, is the graph of F, uh, look up here down at this chart, is the graph of F, concave up at this point of inflection? No. no. That means that the f double prime y coordinate cannot be positive. Is the graph of f at this point concave down? No. So the f double prime values cannot be negative at that point either. Braden, if f double prime doesn't have a positive value, f double prime doesn't have a negative value, uh, what value does f double prime have? That makes sense. Question. Please, ch chance. Dang. <laughs> Rough day. <laughs> Landon's fault. Okay. Is the reason Sarah. for that being zero because at that point it has a constant 
slow for a rate of change. Ash of X has a constant rate or slope. Of so on the F prime, it's going to be a constant positive value, which would make the F double prime a zero. Um, that made any sense. Yes, the, the question makes sense. The answer is no to your question. Okay. It's only one point on F of X where the concavity changes from one value to another. The slope really isn't constant at all. It's just that one transition point where we change from concave up to concave down. Okay. Good question. Please. So like on the chart or the uh, table that we have with all the... Yeah, the chart. Yeah. yeah. Um, since you said it was like either concave up or concave down at that point, since it's the point of inflection, and we don't have it filled in, can we assume it's zero if that ever happens again? Like, did that make sense? Yeah, outstanding question. I'll give you three. Uh, listen very carefully to the answer because it works in one direction but not the other. Okay. Uh, i got to remember it because I get it mixed up <laughs> because of that. Uh, yeah, here we go. If a function has a point of inflection at, say, x equal whatever, then yes, the, the second derivative will have a y coordinate of 0 at that point of inflection. So that's an absolute truth. You can't say it backwards, though. If the second derivative has a y coordinate equal to 0, that does not guarantee that the function will have a point of inflection. Okay. Okay. See what I mean by yeah, it works one event, not the other. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see examples in the future, Chad, why. Yeah, just got to make sure that, you know it works one way and not the other. Yeah. But yeah, else? Yeah, we didn't put it on the chart just because the chart's meant to be kind of a quick memory aid. You make it too big, it gets a little bit yeah. too so. But yeah, else? Awesome. Next one. to uh, 14 here is very similar to 16. So if someone has a very specific question, I can address that, but it's just kind of like general. I'll probably have you work on it first. So, um, just to clarify the table itself for the, the okay. So we come here and say that x equals, is everyone, Okay, does your handout show x equals zero? Yeah. Yes. Good. So it's just my video software that's messing up. So yeah. that's good. I can fix that. So uh, we're looking at x equals zero. And as Sarah just said, the tangent slope at this point would look like this. So Sarah, what would be the value of that tangent slope? Zero. Zero. That's why you'd say the f function has a positive y coordinate. The f prime uh, value would be zero. And then the f double prime, because this is a concave down curve, will also be negative. Is that your question? Any follow up questions on that one? Oh, so it's right here, Ellie. We're looking at out. We're focused on this one point of out. You notice that f at that one point has a concave down shape. Therefore, the y value of f double prime will have to be negative. else? earlier like when you're reading the wording how would you how would you know that it's f uh, prime got it uh, so I read this check which of the following graphs a through D so when I read that where is your eye drawn a through D a through D so you're looking here yeah you keep reading and you say okay so I'm looking down here so which of those graphs could represent could represent the function so these are representing some function. Yeah. So let's put f of x to name them. Whose slope? 
So the slope of f of x is f prime. That's how oh, it is. So. Okay. I didn't know that. Did that help? Yeah, that helps. Okay. Anyone else? Please. This one was kind of weird because like C and or like B and D were basically the same thing. So uh, when I asked everyone in the room, nearly everyone said they got all the way through the homework. Uh, I'll pay you. Raise your hand if you got to the point where you could tell that one of these two had to be the answer. These could not be the answer. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Wait, three tickets. Well done. Uh, at that point, Landon, they, it, they got a little tricky. They really did. Uh, I remember doing this problem a few years ago for the first time, several years ago, and kind of being stuck for probably a couple of minutes. Uh, just like staring at it going, there's, there's got to be a clue somewhere. And the clue I finally noticed was this one. So Landon, what's the x-y coordinate of that point? Uh, zero, three. Zero, three. Okay, someone else. An x-y coordinate of zero, three on the graph of f prime. Someone just describe in words what that is telling you about the graph of f. Jeff. It wouldn't mean that the slope, wait, it would be the slope is 3. Perfect. Slope, and slope, on this graph of f, at what x coordinate are we looking for a slope of 3, Chuck? Uh, uh, when x equals 0. Perfect. So I go right here to x oh, equals 0, and I simply check and see. Let's, let's see if we can kind of do a quick estimate of what the tangent slope will look like. So let's see. Rise over and so go over 1. What does that slope look to be about? Like, what's the rise? 0.5. What's the run? 1. So the slope is a half. That's not matching. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Whoa. I'm a follow up question. So I look at the other one down here. So I go over one, go up. My drawing's not perfect, so I missed it just a little bit. But close enough to tell that three over one is pretty much a slope of three. Follow-up question. Glenn, did that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. I forgot what I wrote. I don't even remember what that is. Um, who asked about this one? Oh, there we go. You know what I mean? I was guessing because of the F log. Three tickets. Good work. <laughs> All right. Wait, what? Sweet. That's the Cal Godwin, cousin of quadruplets. All right. Um, <laughs> that's pretty unique. Anybody else in the room, cousin of quadruplets? There you go. differentiable at some point, 
and it's possible to find the derivative or tangent slope of that function at that point. So write that in your own words. You don't have to write it word for word. You just need to get the same idea. So a function is differentiable if you can find the value of the tangent slope of the function. Function is differentiable if you can find the derivative. So like all that we've been doing is differentiable. Yeah, if we've been looking at functions that are differentiable because we've been able to find the tangent slope at every point on those functions. And what they'll ask you about, Chad, is they'll throw in a function where it's not necessarily differentiable everywhere mm -hmm. and expect you to identify where. You know, where on a specific function is the function not differentiable. Right down the blue. We'll talk about the green in a second. You know, watching everybody's pencil here. Terrible. Yeah. Depends. Okay. The thing you have to remember, Tara's question was about second derivative. It's not a dumb question at all. It's actually very important. You have to pay attention. It's always relative. So if I'm talking about f, Yes, the second derivative of f is f double prime. But if I'm talking about f prime, the second derivative of f prime is actually f triple prime. See what I mean by relative? Perfect. What else? Okay. Uh, definition. Function is differentiable. We can find the derivative at that point. Okay, I need to jump to geometry sketch pad for a minute so I can animate what's happening. For example, you are trying to find the derivative at, say, let me erase this. You're trying to find the derivative at a specific point. We've been doing it a lot at, say, this point right here. So you're trying to find the derivative right at that spot. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay. Mathematically, the way you actually find the derivative or the tangent slope, <coughs> you create a point to the right, see the point here to the right, it's on the function, and you create a secant line between them. Then you do the same thing on the left. You create a point on the left, lost track. You create a secant line between them. You with me? Yeah, it's like a line. Oh, yeah. Please. Does it have to be like the same kind of line? No. In fact, it makes it better, the um, explanation is better if you make them quite different. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. And the idea, Landon, is if you were to move this point closer and closer to the point of interest, yeah. the secant slope changes, yeah. right? And if you move the other point closer, the secant slope also changes. If you get them extremely close to the center point, do their slopes start to look to be the same, Landon? Yes. I don't know why I won't let one move and not the other. That's really not what I wanted. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty nice. um, <laughs> It's kind of let me do it, kind of. You know, that's let me work them in. It's, it's pretty exciting. Um, okay, if you get them very, very close, you finally see what the tangent slope is actually supposed to look like. It becomes this, ah, oh, brother. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the tangent slope becomes this line like this. Yeah. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? <coughs> Let's just do it one more time at a different point just to emphasize. So if I came over here to this point, I can do the same thing. I can choose a point to the right, create a secant line. Point to the left, create a different secant line. As those two points get close to the center, you see what the tangent slope is supposed to look like. Questions? Awesome. Okay, back to the notes over here. What happens is that some graphs have features like this one. Or notice, if I draw a point in the center, so this is on the back of your handout, or one side of the handout, it looks front and back. But, um, so if I draw a point in the center, I draw a point to the right, a couple different colors here, and 
and then I draw a point to the left, and I create secant lines. Can you visualize the idea that if I move those points closer and closer to the center, it doesn't matter how close I get to the center, the blue and the green slope will never be the same. Can you see that? <coughs> so I have a question. Great, please. I don't know why you're stretching your ears. Okay, that means that at x equal negative 8, so you'd say at x equal negative 8, f of x is not differentiable. That's what we mean by differentiable or not differentiable. You cannot find a tangent slope at that point. It's exactly what you were saying to me, Linda. Yeah. Question. Okay, another example. Look here. So if I want to find the tangent slope at this point, if I create a point to the right, and I create a point to the left, and I create secant slopes. Is it, does anyone not see that no matter how close this point gets to that point, and this one gets that, those two secant slopes will never match. So the function is not differentiable at x equal 4 either. So at x equal 8, x equal 4, f of x is not differentiable. Okay, uh, look at the green words down here. This kind of summarizes what we just talked about. So the function is differentiable if, first of all, the function is continuous. Uh, right here we had a jump. The jump is preventing the function from being continuous and from being differentiable. The function must be continuous first before you even consider if it's going to be differentiable. So if there's a whole, jump or vertical asymptote, the function is not continuous and it is not differentiable either. Follow-up questions, let me write that down. So is the first one when it comes to that MSFD, is that? So here, a couple of questions, hopefully. Okay. Uh, so right here, yeah. is there a hole? No. Is there a jump? No. Is there a vertical asymptote? So the function's continuous. No. We can say at this point, there's a point to the left and there's a point to the right, so everything looks great. Uh -huh. But for differentiability, yeah. it doesn't work. Okay. So it fits into the category below right here. So we've identified that the function is definitely continuous there, but to be differential, you also cannot have what's called a corner okay. or a vertical tangent. Uh, Landon said it really well earlier today. This is called a corner because on one side, the slope is very different than on the other side. The slope doesn't converge to a single value. The slope changes abruptly, changes suddenly, dramatically. So, follow-up questions. Awesome. Actually, yeah, I do. Oh, please. So they're like a hole, not like a jump, but a hole. Could you still like, or could you still find the, or would it still be differentiable, or is it not? Would you not even look? Does that mean? Uh, no, it's a really good question, Chad. Three tickets. If the function has a hole, we can't find the derivative at this point yeah. because there isn't a point. Yeah. So we can't find the derivative. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Please, sir. Um, on the graph that you said that at x equals negative 8, x is not differentiable, is that a corner? That's a corner. Perfect. Yeah, this is an example, Sarah, of a corner where on one side of the point, the slope is changing. It's very different than the slope on the other side of the point. Here's another example, Sarah, right here, where the slope on this side is very different than the slope on this side. Does that make sense? Anybody else? Please. Yes. So on that top left graph, this one. So that second point that we chose at uh, five, five. Yeah. So yeah. But so that wouldn't be. Correct. It's, it's two things are going wrong here. Yeah. The function is not continuous because of the jump. And then as soon as you know that a function is not continuous, you, <coughs> all, you also know it's not differential. Yep. 
it's hierarchical in nature, meaning if a function is continuous, maybe it's differentiable. If a function isn't continuous, it's not differentiable. Okay. If a function is differentiable, it is for sure continuous. Uh, sorry, five. I wrote that five. wrong. Thank you. Hey, everyone fix your notes. That was simply my mistake. I just read the graph too quickly. It's actually x equal five. No, good call. And really good questions. Oh, please, sorry. So an example of it being a differential would be like negative six on that same graph without Perfect. Perfect. So if I go to x equal negative 6, uh, this point, there's no holes, no jumps, no vertical asymptotes, there's no corners, uh, it's not a vertical spot on the graph, so it is differentiable for sure. Perfect. Say it one more time. It's close enough. Yes, um, the precise way to say it, Kelsey, is this function is not differentiable for all x coordinates, for sure. In fact, it's not differentiable specifically at x equal 5 and x equal negative 8. Um, one more addition to that, you cannot find the derivative at an end point either. Because if I'm trying to find the slope at some end point, I can't create a point to the right to find the slope. Uh, but everywhere else it is differentiable. And that's usually what happens. Most of the time, you're going to use a, you're going to be given a function that is either, as Chad said earlier, always differentiable, meaning you don't worry about anything, or it's simply not differentiable at one or two places. Is that what you meant? Perfect. Sorry. Is it differentiable at negative two? Is it not? Uh, right here, we're okay. The slope on one side really is the same as the slope on the other. You get very close to that point. He's saying no, y x equal negative two. Oh, x equal negative two. Oh, sorry. My bad. I was looking in the wrong place. X equal negative two right here, Soren, right? Yeah. Uh, no problem there. The slope on the left and the slope on the right. If you get really close to that center point, those two slopes become the same. It's actually the same image that we saw here. When these two points, as they get closer and closer, the tangent really does become horizontal. You see that? Good. What else? Okay, that's the idea of differentiability. And we need that to talk about problem three from the homework. So let's go back to problem three. on the test. Instead of being a problem that kind of verifies that you understand one concept, the AP test writer successfully created a problem that verifies if you can understand, let's see, one, two, three, four different concepts. They're testing if you understand four concepts simultaneously. That's what you should expect on the test. So as you work a problem like this on the practice test, this is definitely one of the greatest hits of the homework. It like is really good at just verifying that you understand all those ideas. Questions? Okay, so we just go one at a time. So one person, please raise your hand and tell me. We're looking for a function that is continuous. So of the five possibilities, can we eliminate any of them and why? Perfect. So we can get rid of D because D has a jump. D is not continuous. It cannot be the correct answer. Okay, perfect. Questions? Ah, check. Um, even if it has like a corner or something, it's still continuous, right? Perfect. Yeah, in fact, the simple definition of continuous is you can draw the function 
without ever really picking up your pencil. And the other more technical definition is every point has like a companion on both the left and the right. So good question. Pretty obvious. Cool. So go to the next clue. The next clue we just talked about. F prime of zero does not exist. Meaning that at x equals zero, you cannot find a tangent slope value. The thing that's confusing here is we are looking for a graph where that's true. So which ones do we eliminate? You can eliminate C because at f prime zero, it's continuous. It would be like that exists. Now there's definitely a tangent slope there. Yeah. Uh, the function is continuous. The function also doesn't have a corner, doesn't have a vertical tangent. So we're good. So that's the one that's not going to work because that one does have a derivative at zero. Wait. So f prime of zero, that doesn't exist, that just means that there's a central corner. Um, so if it says f prime of zero does not exist, what I know, Sarah, is that the function f, therefore, is either not continuous. So the function f would have to have a whole vertical asymptote or jump. Okay. Um, or the function is not differentiable, meaning it has none of it has one of these things, or it has a vertical tangent or a corner. So I'm looking for functions that have these characteristics. Did that make sense? Yeah. Good. What else? Perfect. Um, why are we still considering that these three could be an answer then? Somebody else. Go. Cool. Because each of them are continuous and they're at that time zero. Nicely done. This one is continuous, but it has a corner. <coughs> the slope changes very abruptly at x equals zero. This one, same thing. This one, same thing. Any questions? Uh, we'll go to the next clue. F prime of two is supposed to equal zero. So we talk about that one. Ellie. Oh, when f is two. When x is two. Perfect. So, does the one I'm drawing here, Ellie, fit this one? <coughs> yep, so we don't eliminate. How about this one, Ellie? Yeah. That looks good. How about this one? Good enough. I'm not sure. So, do these three still look like possibilities? Follow up question? Uh, that last clue. F double prime is supposed to be less than or equal to zero. So I'm going to talk about that clue. Chance. So if it's less than zero, we know from the Danica's chart that it has to be negative all the way. So it has to have only cup downs. It can't have a cup up. Uh, Chance understands positive. it perfectly. We just got it getting from an R-rated film to a PG-rated film. Um, Cursing badly as you did that. Oh. Um, so um, it's probably three tickets, though. It's because I didn't really like the already experience, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> someone say all of that once again without any uh, profanity based tirades. Um, <laughs> test, you simply cannot say it. You have to reference either F or F double prime. Right. Deborah's doing great. Three tickets. Somebody else give it a shot. Just say all that again. Oh. Basically, the slope of F double prime has to be negative. Okay, back one second. Not the slope, actually. So the F double prime values must be negative. Yeah, so like, yeah. So then it means that both <coughs> parts of the graph have to be <coughs> 
So both parts of F must be concave down. <coughs> and that's why we know that this is the, so these two don't work. Because they are have a concave up and concave down portion. That's why we know that is the correct answer. There we go. Follow up questions. <coughs> awesome. Okay, uh, we're going to have to diverge just a little bit because I got to get a little more new material in your notebooks. So these three, 8, 12, and 10, uh, you're going to have to come back and ask me about these. We may get back to them again when I start answering questions about the practice test because they're likely all in the practice test as well. But I've just got to get to some older stuff. So, uh, turn to your notebook. You need to do a little bit of writing again. Turn to your notebook. Find out x equals 7. Does that answer your question? Sir? Do you 
anyone else? We've got the general idea of what we mean by Josh, please. Yeah, well, I just wanted to you go back. I just said. Yeah, don't worry. Sorry. And we've got the general idea of what we mean by yeah. the point. All right. You are actually rarely and hardly ever tested on being able to identify a critical point by looking at the function itself. You need to understand that's what it is, but they don't, I don't know if they ever ask you to do that. Instead, what they ask you to do is identify where a function has a critical point based on the derivative of the function. So it's really pretty simple. We wrote a function as a critical point at any x coordinate where that function has a tangent slope of zero undefined. So a function has a critical point, function has a critical point, which is abbreviate, function has a critical point at any x coordinate where the derivative of that function. is equal to zero or undefined. So the two definitions are the same definition. They're simply a matter of perspective. The green one is saying if you're looking at the function, that's how I identify where that function has critical points is I pay attention to the tangent slope of the function. The blue one says if you're looking at the derivative of the function, you don't pay attention to tangent slopes anymore. You pay attention to y coordinates. And identify where the y coordinates are zero or undefined. I'll show you an example once you get it written down. We're almost there. Go. Yeah, let's do an example to help clarify what you're saying. Uh, so look at this sheet. Now you have this in your hands as well. Okay, the blue function on the board, yours are not colored, but the blue function is f of x. The orange function is f prime. The red function is f double prime. So again, it depends on what you are looking at. Now, I gotta have your eyes up here again. This this is where people make mistakes. So I want to try and fix it right now. Uh, if you start asking about critical points, you must make sure you understand: Are they asking you to find critical points on f, f prime, or f double prime? So I will say this repeatedly: You have to keep track of what are you looking at and what are you being asked about. What are you looking at? What are you being asked about? For example, I need a volunteer. We're going to follow the function f. And we're going to identify where f has critical points. Okay. Meaning, we are looking at f and we are being asked about f. So how we answer the question, we've got to keep that in mind. Okay. So f has a critical point. So Landon, just tell me, what's the definition? f has a critical point when f does what? Um, has a tangent slope of zero. Perfect, or undefined. Yeah. So, Landon, just say stop when you hit a place on f where f has a critical point. Here we go. Stop. Stop. Slightly up. Okay. Oh. Stop. Very tense. Okay. Three tickets. Well done. Okay, we were looking at f and we were identifying the where the tangent slopes of f are zero, so we found critical points on f. So agree with me. I need another volunteer. Jackson. So we're going to look at f prime, Jackson. 
we are going to find critical points on F prime. So just say stop, please. Stop. Okay, three tickets, <coughs> but you made the mistake everyone makes. No worries. Uh, what you identified was a place on F prime where F prime is equal to zero. That identifies a critical point on F. Does that make sense? Okay, do you understand what I just said? <coughs> like, he answered a question correctly. He was looking at F prime, and he was finding a critical point on F. Okay, got that? You gotta be very careful. What I wanted to do, just as a contrast, is look at F prime and find critical points on F prime. So, different volunteer, let's go Lexi. So say stop, Lexi, when I hit a critical point on F prime. Perfect. Those are critical points on F prime, three tickets. Question. Okay, now we'll do the one that Jackson was doing, so we need a different volunteer. Let's go here to Jeff. Okay, what we want to do now is look at F prime and find where F has critical points. Okay. So you're going to tell me where to stop on F prime to identify where F has critical points. Stop. <laughs> no. 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 Stop. No. 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 So three tickets please kind of mixed up. Um, it's okay. The definition says a function will have a critical point when the derivative of that function has a value that is equal to zero or undefined. So Sarah, I'm going to stop on F prime to identify where F has a critical point. most of the time. You're looking at a function's derivative, and you're identifying where the function has critical points. So the function has critical points, like here's f again. The function has critical points when the function has a tangent slope of zero. But that corresponds perfectly to where the function's derivative has y coordinates of zero. So we just found, so once again, this is a point where f prime is equal to zero, but it is not a critical point on F prime. It's a critical point on F. Question. We've got two minutes to add just one more definition. So write this down as well. A function has a relative or local maximum at a critical point of the function where the function changes from increasing to decreasing. Can you write that down? You have like 90, I got two minutes, so no, 90 seconds. Function has a relative or local maximum at a critical point of the function where the function changes from increase to decrease. Okay, so you can picture it pretty easily. If the function does this, that's a relative maximum, okay? But in the homework, they're not going to ask you to look at a function 
and identify where the function has a relative max. Instead, they're going to ask you to look at the derivative of the function. So look at Danica's chart on the wall over there and tell me when the function is changing from increase to decrease, what's the derivative of the function going to be doing? Positive to negative. Positive to negative. So by looking at the derivative, you can identify where the function itself has a relative maximum. Question. Uh, relative minimum, I hope you can understand that it's simply the opposite. Pretty good? Yeah. And one last statement before the bell. Sometimes functions have critical points where neither occur. So it's one of the three. Function that has a critical point that's a relative max relative energy. I'll send you a text message with the homework. The homework comes from the yellow, remember, it's not the practice test. So the homework is the yellow, not the practice test.